Glad to have you back live in studio with us. We are in a great segment right now. We are going to take a moment to speak with and recognize our phenomenal sponsors here at this event. Very, very grateful for them. And we're going to begin with NetBrain. And I'm going to turn my attention over to the left this time, where I've got Jason Bodrow here with us, VP of Marketing for NetBrain. How are you, Jason? Hello. Good, Steve. Good morning. Nice. We were talking a moment ago. And again, I was able to walk by the booth yesterday. You guys were jam-packed, giving yeah. loads of demos. You got a divided area. You were so busy in the middle, I couldn't even walk into the booth. So congratulations. Thank you. I want to start by talking talking a little bit about uh, network operations. First of all, do you guys really believe that network operations do in fact need transformation? And if so, why do they? Yeah, and why now, right? Because why I now? think a lot, of, a lot of it, one of my favorite things about coming to Cisco Live every year is understanding what's going on in the industry and the transformation. And of course, we're hearing a lot about the transformation from what was typically physical networks to SDN and ACI. And of course, now it's SD, WAN, and towards the public cloud. And the thing is, you know, one of these technologies isn't displacing the other. It's really augmenting, right? So networks are becoming more heterogeneous, end to end. And so much of this automation that's, bringing, uh, that's coming to the network is, is bringing simplicity through abstraction, but when things go wrong, the complexity still lies underneath the surface. So teams in the operations side are struggling to troubleshoot and respond to incidents amongst all that complexity. So let's talk about the NetBrain approach. What exactly do you offer? What is the primary story that you're telling to customers today and throughout the week? Yeah, so NetBrain, we're a network mapping and diagnostic automation solution. So we talk about network automation in the context of incident response, day two uh, troubleshooting automation. So, mm -hmm. so much automation today has been focused on the day one, right, provisioning. Right. So we think it's time for automation to come to day two network operations, and that's what we mean by NetOps transformation, uh, bringing in uh, automation and augmenting every existing workflow with that automation. So what is that workflow? It's an incident response workflow. It's a ticket that's coming in, typically from a ServiceNow or a BMC Remedy, right? And, and a typical enterprise organization may have hundreds or thousands of these tickets every day. So something that's happening with that volume, that's ripe for automation, right? So we try to augment those workflows from the, the moment a ticket comes in to the moment a ticket closes with two things, with visibility of the network and with end-to-end you know, -end visibility of the network and automation. Very, very good. Let's talk a little bit about medium time for resolution because we hear it pop up all the time. It's one yeah. of the catchphrases that we hear wherever you go. Yeah. What are the challenges that we face in MTTR and how do we begin to overcome them? Yes, so especially, I think the, the, team, the, the term MTTR, it's so overused, right? But the, yeah. the, the, the real part is the mean, mean time to repair, the average. So to improve an average of something, you have to be continuously and systematically better over time. And so we think automation, the approach with automation is through a continuous feedback loop of lessons learned. And, and every incident has some sort of a, a resolution and there's a lesson to be learned about that problem. So we ask ourselves, if it took four hours to troubleshoot a problem, is it going to take four hours next time to troubleshoot a similar problem? The answer should be no. We should digitize the lessons we take from that, uh, that event, codify some sort of diagnostic automation, and ultimately from left to right as a tippet gets escalated, it should be shifting that workload to the left, right? Less escalation from tier two to tier three architects, more uh, driving that automation, driving that workload down to tier one response. We even think there's opportunity to drive workloads to what we can call tier zero before a human even opens a ticket. There's opportunity for automation to augment through maybe an API triggered automation from a ServiceNow ticket, for example. Do you see in the future that we may actually reach some level of standardization in terms of the practice and how we do what you're just explaining? I think pr quite possibly. I mean, if you look at, you know, we talked to hundreds of customers uh, throughout shows like this and, and we under, you know, try to understand what is your troubleshooting process. And so much of it, it follows a very typical workflow, the day, you know, the life cycle of an incident. A, a problem comes in, it's usually a ticket. There's usually a, an IP address. Usually it's a source and a destination of an application, for example. So can you, can you standardize the mapping of an application flow? Can you embed that, map, that mapped application flow inside of a ticket? What are the top three to five things that you should be checking for when you troubleshoot? Well, why don't you just automate those and embed the diagnostic response from that inside the ticket? And then, and then there's, there's a, there's a curveball there, which is there's going to be a, a wild card of things that you can never anticipate, right? So how do you, how do you automate something so reactive and shoot from the hip like troubleshooting? So it, it has to be absorbing lessons learned continuously and, and ongoing so that every unknown problem eventually becomes a known problem. And then those known problems have associated known diagnoses and those, those diagnoses can be automated. And this is a deep embed for NetBrain in terms of how you are responsive in this way with your particular customers. Are you just really hand in hand on a daily basis with them to get to these points? Yes and no. I think the thing we try to do is we try to integrate into their existing workflow and we try to augment that with automation, but more importantly, we have to provide a platform to enable the customers to drive that automation themselves. Automation has to be customized uh, to the unique network, to the unique use cases within that network, so ultimately that's why a platform has to be there and, and, and a low code or no code way to automate that helps network teams, not DevOps teams, not programmers or scripters, helps network teams create that automation. And, and the part of the network 
transformation, the NetOps transformation is, who is the automation for? It's not for just the people that build the automation, the, for the few. It needs to be for, for every network engineer, it needs to be uh, able to access and use that automation. So an enterprise that has 100 or 1,000 network engineers, they need to have that automation at their fingertips, not just one or two people, but, but everybody. Absolutely. Every day. All right, so for those people who are with us here on the streaming broadcast and not live here in Barcelona, if they want to get more information or they want to get started working with NetBrain, what would you like them to do? Yeah, so certainly if you are here, we're in booth number seven in the world of solutions. If you're not, uh, if you're not here at the show, so visit us at netbraintech.com and learn more. And if you're interested to see what sort of mapping and visibility automation looks like, uh, you can uh, basically get a, an evaluation version of NetBrain. All right, fantastic. Jason, thank you for taking the time to be here with us today. Thank you so much thank you. Uh, for your sponsorship here. We are really grateful for it and for that partnership that we have with you at NetBrain between you and Cisco. And uh, congratulations on the great work that you've been doing. Great, thank you, Steve. Really glad to have you here in the Cheers. studio.